Okay, get your notes out. Let's uh, let's take a look here. So for today, what I would like to do, let's we're gonna add the last the last technique. So what I want you to start thinking about going through today. Here's how close up Chromebooks, click them all the way close. So we're gonna get two tests coming up. We got and that's it for unit two. One test is gonna be kind of the we did we did a test on two one and two two. We're gonna do a test on two three through tor uh, two two uh, hold on. two three through two five. Yeah, the other three sections. Just going to cover uh, completing the square, factoring, and what we're going to talk about today. And then we're going to do kind of a unit test. And all that is, is you're just going to solve quadratic equation. Half of it's going to be, you're not going to do any, you're not going to solve anything. You're just going to choose what's the best strategy for solving an equation. I'll give you an equation, and you don't even have to solve it. I just want you to be able to pick what's the best strategy. That's it, multiple choice. And then the other half is going to be you solve some equations using the best strategy. So obviously what you want to be thinking about now is how do I know what the best strategy is? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so we'll, I mean, we're still a little ways out. We got, I'm going to give you, you know, probably a couple work days here after today so you can finish things up, finish up the assignments I'm giving you today. And then we'll do a brief review. So we're looking at probably, uh, let's see, who's the point? Tuesday, you like Tuesday? I just, no, Tuesday, we'll be gone. I, I, we'll see about Monday. I don't yeah, know, I mean, I, it'd be nice to get it in before break so you can get it off your plate yeah. uh, and not have to worry about, you know what I mean, it'd be good to get that one out of the way. So we'll shoot for Monday. We'll see how that goes. Okay. I think that's doable. Okay, so given that though, let, let's look at this problem here. Think about it through, you know, in a way that's that's going to help you when, it, when it comes down to the end of the unit, right? How are we going to approach this? So we're given a quadratic equation up here. What's our first step always going to be? Okay, good. We're going to move things. We're going to move things to the side where we get a positive number of x squared. So we want to set it equal to zero, right? That's real important. So the first step is we always got to put things into standard form for a quadratic equation. And what that is is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay, why is that important? Now think about what we've done so far. Uh, if there's a single x we can point to, it's a moot point. Then we just isolate x and that's easy. Right? So that's, we don't really probably have to do this. Like if there were just a single x up here, I would have just moved everything away from that and isolated it. Right? But if there's not, what have we done so far? Well, we solved by factoring in the zero product property. If we're going to solve something by factoring, we've got to have it set equal to zero because we have to use the zero product property. Right? We'd have to get a product of factors equals zero so that I could set that factor equal to zero and that one equal to zero to find the solutions. But it's got to be equal to zero or it doesn't work, right? Uh, what else? If we're going to complete the square, well, we can start in this mode and then we can just move the C over to the other side and we could go through the steps of completing the square. But I know that you know we've done some practice with completing the square and even some harder problems. But I mentioned this yesterday, keep this in mind. You're only going to choose to do completing the square when it's really easy to do. Otherwise, we won't bother, right? And we won't factor it unless it's really easy to do. Today, we're going to get kind of the ace in the hole. We're going to get the, the technique that always works. If you get one that looks hard to do another way, you just default to what we're going to learn today. Okay, this is going to be, you know, if there's an easier way to do it, go for it. But if not, this will always work. Uh, so let's look at this problem. What could we do with it right now? I mean, we probably, we got to put it in standard form, which means I'm going to do what? What, do I, what are the steps I have to take to get this into standard form? Um, add 28. Add 28. Subtract 15x. Good. And subtract 15x from both sides. So those cancel. And then I would get 3x squared minus, whoops, what's that going to be? Minus 21x. plus 38 uh -huh. equals 0. So let's look at our options. Can we isolate x? Is there a single x we can point to? So we can't isolate x, right? That one's off the table. Uh, could we factor it? Well, I mean, do we probably want to factor that? I don't. Why does that look like a hard one to factor? 
The 3 in front of the x squared makes it hard, right? The 3 in front of the x squared means if this is going to factor, i got to use bottoms up. i got to multiply 3 times 38, which is going to give me some big number, and then i got to find a magic number that multiplies to that big number and adds to negative 21. That's sounding kind of difficult, right? When would we probably factor something? I mean, if I had a problem like this, this would be... There's a good candidate for factor. Why would we probably want to at least try factor in here? There's one in front. Yeah, a is equal to one, right? The coefficient of x squared equals one. So we'd probably want to at least think about this one for a second and just ask ourselves, are there some easy magic numbers we can find? What are they? Okay. Six and seven. Multiply to 42 and add to 13. So that's, if we can find simple magic numbers, then that's the way to do it. That avoids a lot of work. Right, and it's, and it's almost mistake proof to do that. That's the easiest way to avoid having a mistake is if you can't factor it. So then we would just get the solutions x equals negative 7 or x equals negative 6, right? No big deal. But something like that, no, we don't want to, that's probably not. I mean, that just seems like a lot of work. And it may not even, it, it may not pan out. We may not even be able to find magic numbers even if we try it. So let's not try to factor it. So we'll move down the list. Completing the square. Well, if we're going to complete the square, now we've been working on this, what's our starting line for completing the square? We always got to get it in the form x squared plus, b plus bx space equals, equals some number. Okay, so that even right there looks like a little bit of work, doesn't it, to get it into that form. What would we have to do to get it in that form? First, we'd probably what? Subtract 38. Subtract 38. Good. So we'd end up with 3x squared minus 21x space equals negative 38. And now i got to get an x squared instead of a 3x squared. So what do I have to do to both sides? Divide by 3. And so that's going to give me... 3x squared over 3 is just x squared. Negative 21 over 3 is negative 7. And then over here, I'm stuck with a fraction. Well, that's, that's probably not a great idea because when I calculate my number that goes in the perfect square, what's the problem there? It's going to be a fraction, right? Half of negative 7 is negative seven halves, so I'm going to have to I'm going to have to square a fraction. Already, that's looking like kind of a pain, isn't it? And if we get a choose, if we have a choice of which option to use, that seems too hard to do. When would we probably maybe complete the square? I think that's an okay idea. What would have made this easier? Thanks. Say it again. Um, well, okay, sure, but it wouldn't even have to be, like, 7 happens to be prime, but even if it weren't, even if it were 9, it still wouldn't have, would have been tough. It still would have had a fraction. If they're odd numbers, we probably don't want it, right? If they're even numbers, if the number in front of x is even, when I divide by 2, I'm not going to get a fraction. See what I'm saying? Like, if that were an 8 or a 10 or something, then when I divide by 2, we wouldn't have had a fraction. And that makes it easier to think about, too. So completing the square, we'd only use if we have something like x squared plus or minus an even number times x space equals a number, right? Otherwise, we don't probably want to bother with it. So what do we do then? So this is not really a good candidate for any of those things. So what we want to do instead is we want to come up with just a catch-all that always works. I want you to think about this process here. This is a really, we do this a lot in math. What if I took a quadratic equation in standard form? The A and the B and the C just stand for numbers, right? Like in the last example, A and B and C would have been, A would have been 3, B would have been negative 21, and C would have been 38, right? Every quadratic equation I give you is essentially just going to have different values for A, B, and C, but that's all that's really changing, right? So what if we took one where we didn't specify what A and B and C were, but we solved it anyway? If I solve this equation without plugging in values for a, b, and c, does it make sense that when I'm all done, I'm going to get something like x? I'm going to get something like x equals, and in my answer, my answer is going to include a's 
and B's and C's in my answer. I don't, we don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to get A's and B's and C's in my answer if I solve for X, and I start with that equation. Does that make sense? We'll get there. Well, we'll get there as a group. But if I were to do that, then, if I actually can get answers for X in terms of A's and B's and C's, do you see that that's a formula? That's not a specific answer, because we never specified what A and B and C were. If I could get an answer that includes A's and B's and C's, then I could have, for example, plugged in 3 for A and negative 21 for B and 38 for C, and that would have been the answer to that equation, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to do that. We're going to try to come up with a general formula that always works, that's going to be written so my answer includes A's and B's and C's that I can just plug in values for at the end to get the solutions, right? Okay, so what's that look like? The only way I could solve this thing, I can't factor it, because I don't know what A, B, and C are that we haven't specified. So the only method I would have would be completing the square. Right? Now remember, we're gonna, our starting line for completing the square is x squared. We used to call it bx. I'm going to call it capital BX, just because I don't want you to think that that B and that B are the same thing. They're not. Right? Thank you. Right? This B just is some number that's going to be in front of x when I get the x squared by itself. This is the B that starts off in front of the X at the very beginning of the problem. So they're different things. They might be the same accidentally, but in general, they're not going to be. Okay? We've got to get to that form. X squared plus some number times X equals some other number. Well, what are the steps I'd have to do to make that happen? If I want to start with this equation and put it into that form. Well, eventually. Yeah, eventually I'm going to have to do that. But first... What do I probably want to do with just the C? Get it to the other side, just like we did before. Like we subtracted the 38 to this side, right? We wanted to complete the square. We've got to get the number to the other side. It's weird to call C a number, but it is, right? A, B, and C are not variables. They just stand for numbers. We just haven't specified what they are yet. So first step is we'll subtract C from both sides. And I'm going to get ax squared plus bx space equals negative c. What else do I have to do? I divide by a. Right? I need to get the x squared by itself. So if I divide each side through by a, I'll just divide each term by a. That's going to give me my x squared plus bx over a, that's the same thing as saying the number b over a times x equals negative c over a, okay? So we're to the starting line for completing the square. What comes next? So let's think about our template here, right? Yeah, we got to put half of Whatever is in front of the x, we have to take half of that number is what goes with x in the square, right? Okay, so what's half of b over a? I don't divide a fraction by 2. What do I do instead? Multiply by a half, right? So b over a times 1 half, wouldn't that just be b over 2a? Right? Okay. In order to make that happen, though, remember, we had to add some number up here that's going to make it factor that way. What was the relationship? So that was step one. What did we do? What was the number we always added there? Oh, okay. It was that number squared, right? So we're going to get b over 2a squared. Now it's an equation, so i got to add that to both sides. Well, what is b over 2a squared, if I use my properties of exponents. What can I do with the exponent there? I can't, I can't, no, I can't do that, because this is an exponent, and that's, that's not right. But if, if I take, what was my rule? If I did something like I took a times b to a power, what could I do with the exponent? Like, for example, what if I had x times y squared cubed. What would you have got? Distribute, right? Good. I'm going to get that would have given me 
x cubed times y to the what? Six. Yeah, because I would have just distributed it to both the exponents. Right? So what am I going to do here then? I'm just going to distribute it to each of the factors on top and on the bottom, right? What's that give me? B squared divided by H squared. Good. So I'm just going to get on the top, whoops, on the top, I'm going to get B squared. On the bottom, I'm going to get 2 squared times A squared. What's 2 squared? 4. four. four. So it's the same thing as B squared over 4A squared. That's all. When I add this to both sides, if I simplify it, that's what it ends up being, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we've got to add that stuff together. Okay, so how am I going to do that? i got to combine these terms. I know this looks a little strange because there's no numbers. They're all, looks like A's and B's and C's. But how would I add up these fractions? When I add fractions, I always have to have a common denominator, right? What's my common denominator going to be? You know, I used to say, this is a little strange, I know. I used to see it in this form. Right? Usually there's numbers there. This time the numbers are include A's, B's and C's. Now, what if I had something like, if I had numbers, what if I had 1 third plus 7 twelfths? What would I do? Okay, I would recognize that my least common denominator is 12, right? Because that's the smallest thing that both 3 and 12 divide into would be 12, right? So I'd multiply this by 4 over 4. Well, what's going to be the smallest thing that a and 4a squared would divide into? Does a divide into 4a squared? Let's test it. If I try to divide 4a squared by a, it works, doesn't it? What happens? If I have a to the 2 divided by a to the 1, what's my property of exponents tell me to do there? What would you do? Can cancel or subtract, however you want to think about it, right? That's I'm going to get a to the 2 minus 1 on top. So I would just get 4a, right? So a does divide into 4a squared. So what would I have to multiply this fraction by to get 4a squared on the bottom? 4a, right? a times 4a would be 4 times a times a. That's 4a squared. Got to do the same thing on the top and the bottom. Okay, so then if I add all that stuff up, what am I going to get? I've got a common denominator then on the bottom. I've got a common denominator of 4a squared. And on the top, I get a negative c times 4a. That's negative 4ac plus b squared. Well, let's flip it around so the positive one is first. Right? When I'm adding two things up, I can add them in any order. So on this side, I'm just going to get b squared minus 4ac over my common denominator of 4a squared, right? That's a lot of stuff, and I realize that's kind of pretty symbolic and maybe a little harder to follow because it's not numbers, but we did it, right? We completed the square, and that's what we got. So what, what's the last two steps then? And don't get intimidated by the fact that there's no numbers here. a and b and c mean numbers. What are the two steps I would do to isolate that x? Got a square root first, then what? Subtract that number, that term, right? And I'd have it. So if I square root both sides, if I square root both sides, that's going to undo the square. And so on this side, I just get my x plus b over 2a equals. If I square root both sides of an equation, what do I always have to include? Plus or minus, good. And then I've got this square root. Thank you. So if I take the square root of a fraction, I can split that up into the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. So on the top, I've got the square root of b squared minus 4ac. What's the square root of 4a squared? We can make that simpler. 
square root of 4a squared. Now I can break that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of a squared. What's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of a squared? A. A. Uh huh. So on the bottom I get 2a. Last step to get that x by itself, you already told me. Subtract b. Ah, subtract that. It's going to go there, right? So I end up with x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, right? Notice I've got a common denominator, right? So I can write that with one common denominator instead. I can make this a little, little easier. So I've got on the bottom over here 2a. And on the top, then I've just got negative, whoops, I've got negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Okay, what do we call that? We just, that's, we just came up with a major formula that we use all the time in math. What is that? Remember that? Well, it's the formula we're using to solve quadratic equations. What do you think that's called? The quadratic formula. So let's, let me show you what this does for us. This is amazing. I mean, we just did there in 10 minutes. It allows us to solve any quadratic equation. It doesn't matter how hard it is. We can solve any one of them by just plugging in, plugging and chugging and stuff in that formula. That's it, right? So let's try this. So what if, let's, let's just take something like x squared o plus 4x minus 7 equals 0. Okay. I mean, we could do that one by completing the square. It wouldn't be hard to do because we've got an even, b is even, right? Coefficient of x. We could do it, but let's use the quadratic formula. It works too. So we we'll start with the quadratic formula. Let's write it down. Remember what that was? x equals, do you guys remember it? No. no. Oh, okay, hang on. If you can't remember it, I got a little trick for you. Okay, so so let's go through one example, and I'm, I want to get you guys working on some stuff. And like I said, I'll give you plenty of time to work on these things. So let's start with start with just the quadratic formula, and then we can plug in the values later. But what is it? X equals. Come on now. Plus or minus square root. <laughs> okay, remember, remember here, here's the mistake people make sometimes, too. When you say divided by 2a, it's the whole thing is divided by 2a, right? almost wish it said, like, all divided by 2a, but you'll, you'll get it. So there's, there's the quadratic formula. Now, what are the values in this equation? What are the values of a? We've got to make sure it's in standard form, because that's what the quadratic formula always assumes is that you're starting with ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. It's got to be equal to 0. So what are the values of a, b, and c? a is 1. b is 4. 4. c is 3. All we do is plug and chuck. Plug those values in and simplify. So we end up then with x equals, what's negative b? Negative 4. Negative 4 plus or minus the square root of? 16. Good. Now, when we square b, if b is negative, remember, a positive number or a negative number squared is positive, right? Yeah. So when you square out b, if it's negative, just square the positive. Because otherwise, you're, you're maybe going to make a mistake on your calculator. If you don't put the negative number in parentheses, you'll get it wrong. That's easy to forget. So as a general rule, whenever you, in, in math, from this point forward, the rest of your lives, if you ever square a negative number, just square the positive number. You won't make a mistake. So b squared is 16 minus 4 times a, you told me, is 1. c is negative 7. All divided by 2 times 1 is 2. Those are the solutions. We just have to simplify it. So negative 4 plus or minus, uh, let's see, negative 4 times 1 times negative 7. If you have an even number 
of negative signs there, just make them positives, right? Because negative times negative is positive. So what do we get? 16 plus 28, that's a positive 7. What's 16 plus 28? 44. So those are my answers. Now all I have to do is just break those. Because these don't combine, the negative, the one's a square root and one's not, right? Uh, we'll simplify the square root, and I'll split the fractions up. So I get negative 4 halves plus or minus square root of 44. If I make a factor tree out of 44, what do I get? 4 and 11, and 4 breaks up into 2. So couple of 2's, single 11, right? So 2 square root of 11 over 2. What can I do to simplify that? What can I do to simplify that? Negative 2 plus or minus. What cancels here? The twos, because the two is being multiplied on the top, I can cancel it. Because being added, I couldn't. Because they're factors, they're being multiplied. Those are my two answers, right? That's it. What would have happened if we'd had a negative number under the radical? We just would have gotten eyes in our answer. But it doesn't matter. It'll handle that too, right? So that's always going to work every time. All right. So you can start start the assignment. First one, you're just using the quadratic formula. I got really short thing to show you tomorrow, like five, ten minutes, and then you can work all day tomorrow. Yep. Mm -hmm.